Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be looking at the next greater element 2 problem from Leet Code. In this problem, we're given a circular array. For every position in our array, we have to look to the right and find the first element that is also larger than the number at that position. We'll call this the next largest element. For any element where the next largest doesn't exist, we just return negative 1. A circular array just means that, theoretically, the array wraps back around to the beginning. So the next element of the last element is the first element. Let's take a look at an example. Let's say that this is our nums array that we're given. We're going to be outputting or returning an array of the same dimensions. For our first element, the 4, the next largest is the 6. So we put a 6 in the first slot of our output. For the 2, the next largest element is also the 6. So we're going to fill in the 2's position in our output array with a 6. For the 6, there is no next largest element, even when we wrap back around, so we fill the spot in with a negative 1. For the 5, we look to the right and see the 3, then we wrap back around to the 4, 2, and 6 to find that the next largest element is the 6. Finally, for the 3, we wrap around again to find the next largest element is the 4. So for this example, we return the array 6, 6, negative 1, 6, 4, which is the correct answer. Now that we hope we have a better understanding of the problem, let's try and put together a brute force solution. We start off by saving the length of the nums array as n. This is just for convenience. Then we create a new array, which is essentially just two copies of the original array laid end to end. I've called it lnums, shorter for longer nums. In Python, we can do this by just using our multiplication syntax. We also initialize an output array. It's the same dimensions as nums and holds all negative ones to start off. We then have an outer for loop, which iterates from 0 to n, and an inner for loop, which iterates from one position to the right of i until the end of our extended array. If the number of our j loop, l nums of j, is larger than our i number, l nums of i, then we assign the j number to the corresponding position in our output array and break. Finally, when the algorithm is finished, we return the output. Let's go over the time and space for this solution. For time, we have O of n squared because we have the nested inner j loop, which can potentially run on the order of n times every time the i loop runs. And for space, technically we're using extra space when we extend this array, but we can easily fix this by using modulo to index. So technically, as I've written this algorithm, it's O of n, but that's only because I've been lazy and if you use modulo, it would be constant space. So I'm going to write down constant space as the space complexity. Now that we've seen the brute force solution, let's try and improve our solution. To improve our solution, let's go back to the brute force solution and look at what's costing us time. The costly step is that the nested j for loop, which runs on the order of n times for every iteration of the outer i for loop. This inner loop is redundant because it doesn't make use of information that it learns. Let's for example take this as our nums. When i is on the 4 to start off, the j loop iterates over the 3, 1, and 2 before finally finding the 5 which is the next largest. When i moves to the 3, the j loops over the 1, 2, and 5. This is redundant because from our previous iteration, we could have learned that the 3 doesn't encounter a next greater element until the 5. Essentially, we can optimize our algorithm by remembering all the elements which don't have a next largest so far. Then when we do encounter a larger element, we can ask which of our remembered elements have this larger element as their next largest. Let's work through the more broader idea of what's going to be our improved solution with this example before we jump into the code. We start off with 4 and check if it's larger than any of our remembered elements. Right now we've just started so we don't have any remembered elements, so let's just remember the 4 and move on. Now that we're on the 3, we ask if 3 is larger than the 4 we remembered. It isn't, so now let's remember the 3 along with the 4. Same thing for the 1, it's not larger than 3, so let's just remember it. Now comes an interesting case, the 2 is larger than our most recent remembered element, which is the 1. So we can say, okay, 1's next largest is a 2, and then we're going to remove that 1 from our memory. Now we check the 2 against our remembered element of the 3. We ask if 2 is larger than 3. It isn't, so we remember our current element 2 and move on. Now we ask if 5 is larger than our most recent remembered element of 2. It is, so let's go ahead and associate the 2 with the 5 and get rid of it from our remembered elements. We now compare the 5 with the 3, and it is larger than the 3, so we associate those two and remove the 3. Once we do that, we compare the 5 with the 4, and it is larger than the 4, 
so we would associate those two as well. Hopefully at this point you kind of get the broader idea, so let's try and move into coding this algorithm. If you notice the mechanism of remembering numbers and then comparing it to the most recent one is really similar to our stack data structure. So that's what we're going to use for our solution. In our improved solution, we're essentially going to keep a decreasing stack of numbers we've remembered. Then we're going to greedily pop numbers off that stack so long as the current element is larger than the top of the stack. This is the same technique we used in the predecessor to this problem on weak code, the next greatest element one problem. Let's go through the code. The start is similar to our brute force solution. We extend the array and initialize our output, but this time we also initialize a stack. This is the part that is different. And while there are elements on the stack and while the current element is larger than the top of our stack, we set the appropriate position in our output to have this element as the next greater element. On our stack, we're storing tuples where the first number is the value itself and the second is the position at which this value was found. We need both of these because we need the value for comparison and the position so we know which position in our output to change. Finally, we push the current element's value and the position onto the stack. We do this if i is less than n. The reason we need the if condition is because we only need to set elements in the first part of our doubled longer array. Remember that the first part of our doubled longer array accounts for the entire original array. We don't want to do the entire doubled array because we'd go out of bounds for our output. If you haven't seen this technique before of a decreasing stack, the code might be a bit confusing. So let me trace through an example with the code and hopefully that will help. Let's say we're given this as our nums. Then we initialize L nums to be this. We also initialize our stack, which is empty for now, and our output, which is gonna be all negative ones to start. For our first iteration, I starts off on the four. The stack is empty, so the while condition immediately fails. Since i is less than n, we append the tuple 4, 0 to our stack. On the next iteration, the while condition fails because our current element 2 is not larger than the top of the stack, which is 4. Since i is less than n, we push the tuple 2, 1 onto the stack and move on to the next iteration. On the next iteration, our while loop passes because our current element 6 is larger than the top of the stack, which is 2. So we enter the body of the while loop and set the index 1 in our output to the current element, which is 6. Notice that this represents us saying in the output that the next greatest element for 2 is 6. We go back up to the while loop and this time the stack is 4. Our current element 6 is larger than the 4, so we enter the while body again. This causes us to change the index 0 in our output to 6. And again, this represents us saying that for the 4, the next greatest element is the 6. Now the stack is empty, so the while loop fails, and we jump down to the if statement and push the tuple 6, 2 onto the stack. On the next iteration, i is on the 5. The while loop fails because our current element 5 is not greater than the top of our stack, which is 6. So we jump down to the if statement, which passes because i is still less than n. The if statement body has us push the tuple 5, 3 onto the stack. On the next iteration, the top of our stack is 5. This is not less than the current element 3, so the while condition fails. We jump down to the if statement, which passes, and we push 3, 4 onto our stack. On the next iteration, the while condition passes because our current element 4 is larger than the top of the stack, which is 3. This causes us to pop the 3, 4 tuple from our stack. We then edit the third index in our output array to be the current element, which is 4. We jump back up to the while loop condition and the second condition fails because our current element 4 is not larger than the top of our stack 5. We go down to the if statement and notice that at this point it fails because i which is 5 is not less than n which is also 5. Notice that this if condition only fails when we're in the second part of our array. And we want this to happen because we've already accounted for these elements in the first part of our array. At this point I hope you're beginning to grasp the algorithm so I'm going to stop tracing line by line and just skip to the end. When our algorithm ends, it should make sense to you that this is what our output looks like, which is correct. We do have one element remaining on our stack, but that's okay. Now that we're done tracing, let's analyze the time and space complexity. For time, we have O of n. This might seem wrong because of our nested inner while loop, but to analyze the while loop, we have to take a holistic look. The while loop only executes when there are elements on the stack. For each of the n elements, they can only ever be pushed onto the stack once. This means that they also can only be popped off once. So the while loop can only execute a total of n times over the course of the entire algorithm, despite the fact that it's nested. 
Our outer for loop is also O of n, so our total time complexity is O of n. For space, we have a stack, which worst case can get up to O of n, so that's going to be our space complexity. Well, that's it for the improved solution. To recap, we had the initial brute force solution, which had a nested inner loop. This caused us to have quadratic time complexity, but then in our improved solution, we made the time-space trade-off to get our time down to linear at the expense of linear space. That's it for this video. If you found this video useful, please consider liking and sharing it, as well as subscribing to the channel. As always, thank you very much for watching, and good luck on all your interviews.